Feel the heart. Experience the soul. Community Pulse. Everyone, welcome to Radio 786 on 100.4 FM, the program Community Pulse with myself, Zainab Bean. A bit later, Mishka Muhammad keeps you company. That's between 10 and 11, inshallah. Well, coming up in this uh, first hour on this Thursday morning, we have uh, Dr. Faiz Kirsten joining me live this morning. And today we take a look at the evidence uh, which proves that the New World Order well, the globalist agenda is a very real and no conspiracy. That's the first hour, inshallah. But also stay tuned and join us in the final hour. I will be having the Mzansi Ethical Research Center's Brenda Wright, um, also Dr. Tayub, um, telling us a bit more about what the Mzansi Ethical Research Center is about. Um, uh, so find out a bit more. That is at about half past 11. And in between, you can also find out how you can assist and be part of um, the Islamic Relief Foundations. Um, Ashraf Kenny will be joining me just after 11 o'clock to tell us a bit about the appeal, the city appeal. And that is, um, uh, of course, just after 11 o'clock. All that and more, you're on Radio 786 and 100.4 FM, also 1584 Medium Wave in Pretoria. First hour in studio, Dr. Faiz Kirsten joins me. Assalamu alaikum and shukra for being here. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zainab, how are you today? Very well, alhamdulillah yourself. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I just want a, a correction there. No, it's no conspiracy theory. There's no conspiracy <laughs> theory there. Okay. Um, so we're talking about evidence which proves that the new world order or the globalist agenda is very real and no conspiracy theory. Where do we start, Dr. Faiz? Um, actually, a conspiracy fact, eh? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I just came off a five-day water fast, actually, mm. on Tuesday. Five days without food. <laughs> that was an interesting experience. Oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, I was a bit slow on the third day, <laughs> but I'm recovering now. So <laughs> if I'm still slow, uh, listeners will just forgive me. Um, where do we start? Good question, actually. You know, I've been doing research for many years, as you know, and... Uh, I studied the global health crisis and I looked at, you know, why people are so sick all over the world. And I realized, you know, geez, we in a war, you know, this is a war, you know, the food, the pharmaceutical drugs, the vaccines, all of these things. And it struck me that this is a war. Then I obviously studied the New World Order, which confirmed that it is a war. And then, you know, from religion, you know, that the time that Nabi Adam was created, Iblis, you know, declared war on mankind. <laughs> okay, so for me, everything, this whole thing is just a war that we're in. Um, but lo and behold, I actually came across a document one day called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, where these guys controlling the world actually declared war in, in the form of a document. They actually published it. Well, they didn't publish it. It was actually found by somebody but they do publish they do make known what the intentions are this is called predictive programming mm. they publish books they make movies there's many movies that actually tell you what's going to happen in the future okay mm. um th- yeah magazines newspapers there's many many there's much information they provide to people who are aware mm. so this is not a conspiracy theory these people actually tell you what they're going to be doing mm. in the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years, okay? So today, and, and last week we spoke about banking, you know, mm. that's that's one of the silent weapons that they actually, in fact, that's probably the main silent weapon they use to basically decimate, mm. disempower, and slave humanity. But there's many other weapons which we'll talk about, okay? And these are silent weapons. Mm. When you think about a war, you think about a hot war, guns mm. and bullets and bombs, Okay. But these guys are evil, okay? So they are actually waging a silent war, which most people don't even, obviously you won't realize you're in a war when the weapons are silent. It's like the war we don't see. You don't see it. Electromagnetic Mm. radiation is hitting you every day. You know, I sat in an electromagnetic field for two years, right across on my desk, you know, without knowing that I was being bombarded by these silent weapons, you know. Mm. Two sources, Wi-Fi and the hotspot in a modem. So the deception is, is real. These people operate by deception. They only got as far as they have gotten because of the fact that they operate through deception. They actually ask governments to deceive their people, which is 
documented on record. Um, and then the governments do deceive their people, okay? For example, um, let me give you this one example about Mandela. Mandela, what he said about the New World Order was the New World Order, you know, that is now, that is now in the making must focus on the creation of a world of democracy, peace, and prosperity for all. Mm. Okay, so now you would think, wow, the New World Order is something really great. You know, <laughs> we should all be striving for a New World Order. But let me tell you what Dr. Koch, who, who also studied the New World Order and assisted, and, and this is what his, his conclusion he came to. He said, the New World Order under the United Nations will reduce everything to one common denominator. The system will be made up of a single currency, single centrally financed government, single tax system, single language, single political system, single world court of justice, and a single state religion. Each person will have a registered number without which he will not be allowed to buy or sell. And there will be one universal world church. Anyone who refuses to take part in the universal system will have no right to exist. So today I want to basically, so that's not the democracy and peace Mandela is talking about, okay? Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly the opposite. And you find religions, we'll talk about, you know, these three documents now, but you'll find religions is all blending together today. It's mm. becoming one religion. You have these lots of interfaith, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, attempts for people to come together. Mm. Perhaps not, they don't realize that they're actually all starting to form one religion. There's going to be just one religion in the world. Obviously, if these guys get their way, which they have gotten, you know, over the last mm. quite a while now. So the three documents I really want to, basically discussed today one is called the protocols of zion or the elders of zion just a summary i'm not going to obviously it's a long document i'm just going to give you a summary the other one is called silent weapons for quiet wars which i mentioned mm. and the other one is the new world order exposed by an insider in 1969 okay this insider was dr richard day he was a pediatrician and he was a big uh, rockefeller foundation a rockefeller family insider he was he knew exactly what's going to happen in the future. And mm. in 1969, he gave a lecture. He was a pediatrician, a professor of pediatrics at Pittsburgh University, I think, in Pennsylvania. And uh, he gave a lecture and he said, no notes, no, don't take notes and don't record this. Mm. In those years, we just tape recorders, okay? Mm. And he told the, the, and it was doctors who attended this meeting. And he explained in this meeting what's going to happen in the future. Okay, and then Dr. Uh, Dr. Larry Dunnigan, who, was, who attended this meeting, mm. in 1988, I think, he actually recorded what he, that was 20 years before, mm. uh, that he, what, what Dr. Day had actually said, and then he published this, uh, his recordings of his memory of that lecture. Mm. And in that lecture, you know, he explained to people what's going to happen in the future. And m most of the things that he said, in fact, if not all of them, have actually come through, true, you know. Mm. Uh, so he was an insider, a new world order insider. So they actually tell you what's going to happen. And in the world you see around you today that you're living in is, in fact, the, the world that these people have actually planned for us. Mm. Okay, And they continue to plan. And from what I know, what they plan for the future, we know already where we're sitting now with the banking system, the food, the EMFs, the radiation, and so forth. Uh, what's still coming, you mm -hmm. know, that is, <laughs> I actually don't want to talk about that, quite honestly. It's actually, if people don't, and the, f the sad part is people just don't care. <laughs> Even if you mm -hmm. tell them these things, they're dying around you, you know, and you're telling them why they're dying, but they still don't care which mm. in which which obviously is not surprising because the mind control is so powerful mm. the kind of mind control technology that these people have is unbelievable mm. honestly it's <laughs> it's way beyond belief how mm. far advanced they have come so to see human beings not acting like human beings should be acting is actually scary but it's understandable given the technology mm. that these globalists actually have at their disposal mm. and they're using it so, I mean, shall we start with the protocols? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go right into it, Dr. Faze. Okay, so I'm just going to read out the summary of the Protocols of Zion. You know, it's written by a Jewish man, um, and he, he actually, he said, I'm just going to read it, okay? He says, Zionism is a political movement. Not all Jews are Zionists, including this author. Many Christians and atheists are Zionists. And he said, further complicating this issue, one of the world's leading geneticists, Dr. Aaron Elhaik of Johns Hopkins University, himself a European of Jewish ancestry, 
published a study in 2013 which conclusively determined that European Jews have exactly zero Semitic DNA. They are not Semites uh, and are in fact Khazars, uh, which are orig- uh, origin modern-day Georgia or Ukraine, who converted to Juda- Judaism around 800 AD. So the protocols of the elders of Zion were made public over 100 years ago. And at that time, you know, it was deemed by Zion, by Zion as judged to be a forgery. <laughs> okay, mm. But yeah, 100 years later, let us, using hindsight, re-examine what was actually stated in the protocols, who some call the world's most prescient forgery. And the word prescient means having or showing knowledge of events before they take place. Mm. Okay, Like I mentioned, Dr. Larry Dunnigan. Speaking about Dr. Richard's day, Richard Day's lecture. Now, okay, so the Zionist world order, the new world order is the desired outcome. It will be accomplished by the control of money and the media, okay? So uh, I keep telling people, don't watch TV, <laughs> don't read newspapers, okay? And there's a real reason for that. Uh, so they say Mo- Goyam are mentally inferior and can't run their nations properly. For their sake and ours, we need to abolish their governments and replace them with a single government. This will take a long time and involve much bloodshed, but it's for a good cause. Here's what we'll need to do, and I'm just going to quickly outline this. There's 23 points that they make here Mm. in the the protocols. One, a note, it says, place our agents and helpers everywhere. These guys are everywhere, running universities, running hospitals, running schools. (laughs) They are everywhere, okay? They're running governments too. So take control of the media and use it in propaganda for our plans. Start fights between different races, classes, and religions. Now you see people are fighting amongst themselves, Sunni, Shia, Christian, Mm. Muslim. That is all orchestrated, and we can't see through that. Whereas the real enemy is standing in, you know, behind the scenes and basically maybe laughing themselves Mm. silly. Use bribery threats, blackmail, lies, and deception to get our way. Use Freemasonic lodges to attract potential public officials. Appeal to successful people's egos. <laughs> we see that all the time. Mm. Appoint puppet leaders who can be controlled by blackmail. Replace royal rule with socialist rule, then communism, then, desp- then despotism. Abolish all rights and freedoms except the right of force by us. That is true. You see, we have no rights in the system today. Sacrifice people, including Jews sometimes when necessary. Eliminate religion. Replace it with science and materialism, which obviously mm. is a reality today. Control the education system to spread deception and destroy intellect. Well, Mm. what can I say? (laughs) Rewrite history to our benefit. Use our media to create entertaining distractions. Well, Mm. what do you see today? Corrupt minds with filth and perversion. I mean, sometimes you get uh, people sending you emails, no no messages on your cell, you know, strange looking, uh, uh, strange jokes you know filthy jokes i mean people take that as normal today and mm. it, it, it corrupts your mind it pollutes your mind these things you know but people take take that as normal encourage people to spy on one another keep the masses in poverty and perpetual labor i mean is that a reality today mm. take possession of all wealth property and especially gold we spoke about gold last week they don't want you to have gold use gold to manipulate the market ask me about that introduce a progressive tax on wealth Replace sound investment with speculation. Make long-term interest-bearing loans to governments. I mean, all governments are in debt by money that's fake. It was just conjured, conjured up out of thin air, lent to governments, and then governments have to pay that back with interest, and then we have to pay tax so that the governments can pay the interest mm. on fake loans. I mean, this is an insane system. Give bad advice to governments and everyone, everyone else, <laughs> and governments actually take this bad advice and blame the victim. So he says, eventually the Goyim will be so angry with their governments because we'll blame them for the resulting mess. They'll glad, gladly take, have us take over. We will then appoint a descendant of David to be king of the world, and the remaining Goyim will bow out and sing his praises, and everyone will live in peace and obedient order under his glorious rule. Obviously, then I've came across eschatology. You know, I wasn't aware of the subject of eschatology, mm. the, the end times. Mm. And then you hear about Gog and Magog, you know, which I think is obviously these psychopaths running the world and uh and you know dajjal or the false messiah and so so you learn about all these things but the fact is we are in a war and if we don't realize we're in a war then we're in big trouble actually Mm. so yeah um maybe we can talk about uh about the next book if we if we if Mm -hmm. we want if unless you have any questions no you can no i'll 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 reserve my questions for the end okay so so this other book is called uh 
It's called the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, which was discovered by somebody who bought a scrap photocopy machine from Boeing, from the Boeing Air Force, uh, a Boeing company. And inside there, he found a document called the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Now, in 1948, Harvard, Harvard University s- uh, started a research project called uh, Economic, uh, uh, what, was, what was it called? I think it was called the... Uh, uh, Research, uh, economic Research Project, the Harvard Economic Research Project, and that was funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. They wanted to find out how can you control or engineer an economy in America? How could you engineer America's economy? And then once they discovered that, then they would use those methodologies and that technology to basically control the economy of the entire world. Mm. And so they, and then the United States Air Force got involved in this project. It took four years. And they actually discovered, you know, using computer technology and so forth, how to actually control an economy, okay, in America. And then they decided they're going to go forward with that and apply it to the whole world. And so they had a meeting in 1954, the Bilderberg meeting, the first meeting of the Bilderberg group. And every, every year the Bilderbergs actually meet. And these are the elitists that control the world. They meet annually to discuss their plans for the for the next year for the world okay (laughs) so these international financiers and and industrialists and politicians they meet there and they discuss you know what they have planned for us for the next year and the coming years okay so that's called the Bilderberg Davos is basically a deception if you really want to know what's going to happen in the world go to Bilderberg okay (laughs) that's when you'll know what's going to happen so they published their first document in 1954 and then in 25 years later this document was published as an anniversary you know, 25th anniversary of discovering how to control the world's economy. <laughs> okay. Mm. I mean, you used to see this in the movies, you know, people want to, some guy wants to dominate the whole world, yeah. you know, that's poor predictive programming. It's actually true. People want to and do control the entire world, most of the world, but they want to control the entire world, although there's some intelligent countries trying to stop that. So let me just quickly, let me just quickly read the first Three pages of Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. It says, Welcome aboard. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War called the Quiet War being conducted using subject of biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies and its weaponry. Now, this was obviously given to the people attending the 25th anniversary. Uh, And this was in May 1979. So it says security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, that is, the engineering of social automation systems or silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, that is, slavery and genocide. This manual is in itself an analog declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny. Otherwise, it might be recognized as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, whenever any person, now this is very important, whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodologies for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. In other words, they say we are now declaring war. Okay, so the solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid with no agonizing over religious, moral or cultural values. It says to the people there, you have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without the loss of discretion or humility. (laughs) Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. So they're basically telling you to be psychopathic. Now, the fact is you cannot reach the level of the elite without being psychopathic. And if you're not psychopathic, then, and they see you, somebody with uh, talent enough to be in that level, then they will make you psychopathic. If people are interested to know what I'm talking about, then you go... uh, Search on YouTube for Ronald Bernard, interview with Ronald Bernard, who was a banker, and he was moving up to the upper levels of banking, and he had to then become a psychopath, okay, and he failed the test, and and one of the ways of becoming a psychopath is to sacrifice a baby, okay, and he couldn't do that, and so he got out. So 
just into just Google or you uh, search in YouTube for that interview with Ronald Bernard. Okay, <laughs> that is unbelievable stuff. What that guy has actually shared, mm. and it was confirmed by a um, person who what what is people nonverbal communication specialist looked at that interview and said what this man is saying is absolutely true, and she's giving commentary as he was speaking. Watch, search that video also. This uh, nonverbal communication specialist. Confirming what he was saying there in that interview is absolutely true. Mm. So let me read this another page of this document. It says, Consent, the primary victory. A silent weapon system operates upon data obtained from a docile public by legal but not always lawful force. Much information is made available to silent weapon systems programmers through the Internal Revenue Service. So the tax collection agency, you know, provides information. This information consists of the enforced delivery of well-organized data contained in federal and state tax forms, collected, assembled, and submitted by slave labor provided by taxpayers and employers. Furthermore, the number of such forms submitted to the IRS is a useful indicator of public consent, an important factor in strategic decision-making. Psychological basis. When the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without just compensation, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement and legal encroachment. A good and easily quantified indicator of harvest time is the number of public citizens who pay income tax despite an obvious lack of reciprocal or honest service from the government. <laughs> oh, well, we can say word word to that. Okay, so they say diversion is the primary strategy. Experience has, experience has proven that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of the basic system principles on the one hand, while keeping them confused, disorganized, and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other hand. Now, this is, this is mind control, okay? Program ignorance and perception management. And they say this is achieved by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities, providing a low-quality program of public education in mathematics, logics, logic, systems design, and economics, and discouraging technical creativity. So when you ask people about money, nobody knows about money, what money is, although they use it every day, because it's not taught in school, or even mm. in university, really. They don't actually teach you what real money is. Secondly, they're engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgence and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities by unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape by way of constant barrage of sex, violence and wars in the media, especially the TV and the newspapers, giving them what they desire in excess, of, in excess, junk food for thought and depriving them of what they really need, rewriting history and law and subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabri fabricated outside priorities. These preclude their interest in and discovery of the silent weapons of social automation technology. How true that is. The general rule is that there is a profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems, then offer solutions. And so diversion summary is media. Keep the adult public attention diverted away from the real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. Schools. Keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. Entertainment. Keep the public entertainment below a sixth grade, grade level. Work. Keep the public busy, busy, busy with no time to think back on the farm with the other animals. Now, this is what these people think of us. They actually see us as animals, and, they, and, and that's exactly where they have us today because we're doing exactly what they want us to do. You are listening to Radio 786 100.4 FM, Dr. Faiz Kirsten in studio this morning. And we're talking about evidence which proves that the new world order or globalist agenda is a very real, is very real and no conspiracy theory. Now we have a call on the line, Dr. Faiz, but we also have a few messages that came via 786 10 11 12. Let's first take the call. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Zinabin. I'm going to ask how are you because you sound very good, but I'm going to ask the doctor how is he? Alhamdulillah, very well after a five-day water fast. <laughs> and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's all we can say, Doctor, is Alhamdulillah. Doctor, I just want to add to your discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, Ray Loon, there was a fellow that uh, 76 had on the radio, uh, Mr. Dick Ray Loon, and mm -hmm. he brought up the same thing that you are bringing up. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for us to go to that narrative, for us to, to keep on with this narrative, which has been kept away 
which some of the radio stations uh, does not allow. But I'm just happy for 76 because they are allowing it. You know, Doctor, I sat in a conversation of, of, of Israeli students. They were Palestinian students, Muslim students. In fact, the one Palestinian confirmed that Israel is an apartheid state. But by sitting in the conversation and talking to them, I realized that all the messages that is in the Quran was already given to the previous prophets, to the previous Nabis, Nabi Isa, Nabi Musa. Our Nabi just came to reaffirm what they have said and to, in order for us, um, in order for people not to distort it, they append the, uh, uh, you know, you know, no, Al Allah granted Al Nabi the Quran. Uh, you know, inspired the Quran to him so that there can be no distortions, so that there can be no additions to it. And what has happened by just speaking to these students, the Talmud, they are also against the Talmud. And then there were some Christian uh, Palestinians also, they're also against some of the Gospels. Now the same thing has happened to our team. The very same thing has happened to our team, where they have brought in uh, you know, another law and make other books priority instead of the Quran, which Allah Ta'ala has granted us. We are very fortunate to have this Quran granted us to maintain and, and, and so that nobody can check. Now, the new world order, they have used religion. They have used people. They've used that to keep people subservient, to make us ritualistic instead of pragmatic. And if you look at our lives, our Muslim lives of today, we do not, we haven't contributed anything to society other than becoming a Sunni, becoming a Shia, now lately it's Ahmadiyya, all these isms that have crept into our deal. And these people are actually fomenting it. They're actually financing these, these, these institutions that keeps us subservient. So the new world order is very, very real, Doctor. Believe me, okay. I have I, 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 I've, I'm experiencing it, and by, by just interacting with the students, I mean, mm-hmm. that there's one Palestinian girl caught up, and she said apart, that Israel is a real apartheid state. Okay. The Jewish uh, students that was with was quite shocked to hear from her. But I would like to, 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 to add up to this discussion and to show that how religion has changed. Okay, Shukran, Brother Ishma, we have the gist of, of uh, your comment and question. We have one more call on the line. Radio 786, Community Pulse, Assalamu alaikum. Salam to you, lady, and salam to the learned scholars. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much to enlighten us more, you know, because Afwan. this is not to me personally, this is not a, a strange thing, because these people that uh, make it uh, known, they said on numerous occasions that the world is o- overpopulated. That's why, in fact, they're targeting Muslims, and they're not even shy to say it. But what they really bugs me uh, you know, is we, why do we succumb to them? They make it, they, they, in no uncertain terms, they state it. They, they go to North Korea, they, wherever they go, they, they make a fraction, like North Korea, South Korea, you name it, in, 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 South, in, in Africa, you name it. But the worst of it all is so-called Muslims. We're killing, I think, we killing more people from our own so-called, uh, than uh, any of these people. So there is certainly is a problem, and I think this should be discussed. It's the massage is not only there for Salah, because people are going to die. And, and very few of our learned people come together to at least give the younger people clarity about these people's intention, because we... We uh, uh, we so fascinated, the, the, especially the young and it with, the, with the Americans and the, and the British and what did you and these people in no uncertain terms. They see them in South Africa. They tell them, they tell us these people bring you uh, uh, jobs and will bring you uh, 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 all these kinds of uh, material things. In the process, they'll take the gentrification, all the all all the things. And but yet we still con- uh, continue to to run after these people. So I think they really. Uh, how especially in the massage, these kinds of topics have to be spoken about that can inform the younger people that they must 
gibt ja da eine da eine äh, äh, way of moving forward but unfortunately very very few of these conversations is being held shukran shukran wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh 0216991786 evidence which proves that the new world order or the globalist agenda is very real and it's no conspiracy theory not a conspiracy theory now just coming back to some of the whatsapp messages we received one of it is assalamu alaikum doc how important are symbols in the world order then if you can comment on the importance of the sun star that was placed on signal hill for 6 months in 2014 um if memory serves me right symbols you know the illuminati are very, very important uh, that's a whole subject on its own i don't want to go into that i didn't even know there was a sun star mm-hmm. placed we on signal hill yeah i, I didn't know about that like, when was that recently 2014 yeah this is the worship of the sun is also part of this whole craziness but i don't know about that so but symbols is very very important uh, and you'll see it you know all over the place the checkered marks you know you find these traffic officers walking around with caps hats you know or these caps would have the, the checkered mark uh, symbol on on the cap it's a whole subject on its own symbols are very important the answer the short answer is it's very important symbology uh, but uh, like we said it's a very real situation we're dealing with it's not just theory you know like people in the past said no nah, dr kirsten is a conspiracy theorist <laughs> and then i would sit down with them and explain to them and then you know then they wouldn't be able to counter me because i'm not a conspiracy theorist i'm a conspiracy factist i'm just sharing the information that i authentic information that i've uncovered in my own research that's what i'm doing whether it's the protocols of zion or this document um silent weapons for quiet wars or um the other one that i spoke about uh, dr larry day discussing dr richard uh, larry danigan d- discussing dr richard day's lecture but coming to religion i mean today you can't trust anybody all religions have been infiltrated in fact dr day when he gave his lecture he said most of you sitting in this lecture today that was in 1969 will be surprised at what i'm going to tell you now but what i'm going to say now is that you will you will think that religions or the church will be against us in what we're doing but i'm going to tell you now that the church will help us in our efforts mm-hmm. to dominate the world and obviously it's gone to not just the church but the synagogues and the masajids okay so religions people leading religions are actually helping these globalists to to uh, you know mm-hmm. achieve their ends of controlling the world so you can't really trust religion religious people anymore who can you trust in fact there was a, a, a hadith when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you know there'll come a time when um one man will be able to say this to another man i know a trustworthy man in that town you know <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to travel a while to find somebody who's mm. actually trustworthy because everybody will be untrustworthy you can't trust anybody mm. including your religious leaders If you look at Saudi Arabia, I mean they work hand in hand with the gl- uh, the globalists. Okay, they in fact themselves are globalists. The banking system, you know, they they are part of the banking, you know, crime syndicate. So, who can you trust? Religion is not the answer. Religious leaders are not the answer. You got to do your own research, use the Quran. Mm. I always say to people, go back to the Quran, study it even if you have to sit for a whole year and don't eat and just study. <laughs> <laughs> I sat for five days without eating. I just drank water. Uh, but do what you must do you know to get to the real information because that's the only solution and mm. if you die in the process while doing that then alhamdulillah you know you're, you're going to be resurrected one day anyway mm-hmm. so this is only a temporary life okay you'll be resurrected to your very fingertips so if you, you lose your body through death now it's going to come back one day mm-hmm. okay so don't worry about death <laughs> <laughs> one of the whatsapp messages on 0786101112 asked the question could the doc please elaborate on the bolderberg group and the modus operandi also that that debt in slaves with the illusion that one has a class status and the fact that the open mind of the people can and will conquer the program of the advocates of this new world order just give me the latter half of that question again or that statement um could the doc elaborate on the bilderberg group okay well first the bilderberg is a very secret society okay but they not that secret because lots of journalists have been following them every year okay and then they they write articles on them and so forth uh but still you know it's not it's not something that it's not like 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 davos which is publicized and it's on tv and you know mm. everybody you know invited you know who's invited to davos you won't really know who's invited to bilderberg mm. and who attends bilderberg meetings because it's highly secret okay so uh 
there's there's information on the internet, you know, the reliable information that you can go and just just search there. But it's a secret society of, of international bankers, the Illuminati and their and their minions, okay, <laughs> that basically uh, run Bilderberg. And then the second half of that uh, Emma, uh, speaks about debt and how it enslaves us um, to believe that we have some class status. Well, look, you must remember human beings and the, and the pyramid of control are right at the bottom. OK, so the people are right at the bottom. Then you have governments. Now, governments are corporations, OK, run by people. OK, just remember, people are right at the bottom. And I come to the class status now. Then they have corporations above governments. OK, then you have the banks and so forth. We spoke about that last week. But now people, there's a hierarchy amongst people also, which these guys create, okay? They create a hierarchy, a class state, a class difference. Between, mm-hmm. and, and, and the people themselves that mm-hmm. maintain that hierarchy, mm-hmm. okay? We, we, have, we do have to go for a break, Dr. Faiz, but we have one last call. As-salamu alaykum wa alaykum wa alaykum wa alaykum wa alaykum wa to you and uh, the honorable guests and all your listeners. Wa alaykum wa In fact, we all talk about the problems in the world and uh, what are the Jews and the Christians or the West or whatever are doing. But the question is, the problem lies with the Muslim world, because they are disunited, they don't have leadership, and they've abandoned the Holy Quran. When you speak to every Muslim, they always talk about the Quran, they talk about the Quran, but when you tell them, come, let's come, let's come to the Quran, and they discuss on the Quran, then they run away from the Quran. That's why Nabi Muhammad, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has prophesied, he said, there was not a prophet that passed that hasn't warned his people or community about Dajjal. Now, what is Dajjal and who is Dajjal? Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu described him beautifully. He said, he will even command the heaven to rain and the heaven will rain. He will even tell the heaven to rain. He will even take a person and cut him up into two and bring him back to life. Uh, its cows will be very healthy. The milk that it produces will be beneficial to, will, will be, uh, uh, beneficial to the world. And uh, whoever sides with this Dajjal will enter into Jahannam, and whoever go against it will go into Jannah. So what does it actually mean? Which means when you oppose these evil forces, then they will apply sanctions to you. Then they will make you suffer through hunger and all that. Now, Dajjal is not only exclusive to the West. It includes Muslim leadership as well, because so-called in name, I'm saying. Why? Because they are the, the ones that are financing these things, and they are blind spiritually. But Physically, they shop. Why? Because they look at the interest, the material welfare. Now, what I'm trying to say is, so Nabi Muhammad Sallam gave the answer. He said, then the Imam Mahdi will come. That's why he prophesied. He said, whoever wants to be saved from the jar, he must read the first 10 verses of Surah Tukaf, and he must read uh, the last 10 verses of Surah Tukaf. Now, if you analyze these verses, then we will get the answer. Now, uh, and when... Uh, uh, when we actually wish for the Jews and the Christians to actually to uh, uh, to vanish from the earth, that will never happen because the Quran promises the Jews and Christians or people of other faith will remain until doomsday. So we can never wish it away. But what will happen in the future, inshallah, that Islam will dominate, but it will only dominate through Khilafat by the establishment of Imam Mahdi. Shukran wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Before you do comment on that, Dr. Faiz, we are due for that break. And inshallah, after the break, we will continue. Do stay tuned today, day 786 100.4 FM. We're talking about evidence which proves that the new world order or globalist agenda is very real and not a conspiracy theory. With Dr. Faiz Kirsten, do stay tuned. It is seven minutes to ten on Radio Seven Eight Six. Worth just a few minutes left uh, to conclude uh, the discussion this morning. Looking at evidence which proves that the globalist agenda or New World Order is very real and no conspiracy theory. Doctor Faiz Kirsten has been um, unpacking um, uh, some of the documents um, uh, that proves uh, that this is in fact the case. Doctor Faiz, we also have, of course, a few um, WhatsApp messages and. Questions that you've been um, asked. Uh, one of it also reads Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Faiz reveals many facts, alhamdulillah, regarding symbols. The Saudi police has a symbol of an eye on the caps uniform. Why? Um, world order control. My view suddenly we have too many NGOs doing the same work, um, splitting up support structures, also sapping our community to send elsewhere when we caught, when we and we ought to send to our nearest communities in dire need. These NGOs also travel at our community's expense. 
That point about the Saudi, yes, the, that one eye ah. symbol. I mean, that's amazing. You'll see it all over in the Saudi f- police force and so forth. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over Saudi Arabia, in Makkah also. So you find Dajjal there also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, then um, Kola promoting the Mahdi, what nonsense. Only the Quran has the capability to enforce a world order to perfect the peace program. If we promote its reading only then. We will see the paradigm shift. We can already witness where Islam is growing in the West. Mm. Well, you know, you have denialists and you have optimists and you have realists. Okay, <laughs> I just look at the facts. Okay, that's all I do. I look at the facts and then I come to conclusions based on facts. Okay, mm. that's called critical thinking. Um, everybody has a right to think the way they want to. And, you know, we have to respect that. Yeah. Our final caller this morning, the Radio 7 and 6, Assalamu mm. Alaikum. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. How are you? Very well, thank you. You may go ahead with your question. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. So I wanted to find out, thank you very much for, first of all, the discussion that you guys are speaking about. You're welcome. I think it's extremely relevant in our world today. And I wanted to ask you, Dr. Fayez, if you've ever done some research into, um, for example, a, uh, ancient astronaut theory, as well as the idea of UFOs or extraterrestrial encounters and how that would relate Mm. to the globalist agenda's um, mission to keep this quiet as a way to uh, re- retain the fossil fuel industry and not move our society forward in a new technological well, uh, way, also socially. So I don't know if you've done some research into that, but I would love your perspective on mm. the idea of this possible extraterrestrial visitation and what that would mean for our world. Mm. Thanks so much uh, for your ca- your question. And that um, a first time caller, Ashley, calling us this morning. Thanks so much to you, Ashley. Bye-bye. Yeah, look, the UFO thing is a... <laughs> I haven't done in-depth research, but I'm aware of the UFO phenomenon and so forth. And I think they're going to use a, an alien invasion. You see, they have this problem-reaction solution. The previous caller um, mentioned this about problem-reaction solution. They create the problem, people react, and then they wanted the solution, you know... Um, that in, they, put, they put in place a solution that they wanted to in the first place but wouldn't have been able to if there wasn't a problem. Mm. So they create the problem, then the, the populace reacts, mm. and then they put in, the place, put in the solution. And so they may, the New World Order may come about as a result of a faked alien invasion, saying, oh, we've got this alien invasion. All governments must come together, must form one government. There's various ways they're going to bring in the New World Order, and the alien invasion may be one of them, UFO. It's a whole story on its own, this UFO. St- I haven't done in-depth research, but I'm familiar with the UFO mm. you know, uh, narrative. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if, could, if I was going to actually just read out what exactly how they describe silent weapons, but maybe we can maybe do in, our, next, in our next discussion, yeah, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. And we also um, uh, not able to reach all of the WhatsApp messages that uh, that came through, inshallah, in our next discussion on next Thursday. Don't miss it. You can tune in for part two, and um, this, of course, looking at evidence which proves that the world, the new world order or globalist agenda indeed is very real. Dr. Faiz Kirsten, shukran so much for your time and until next week, inshallah. Afan, Zainab, Afan, shukran for having me. Appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Do stay tuned today, dear 786 100.4 FM. It's three minutes to 10 o'clock and we'll take that break and then the news and of course after that, Mishka Muhammad keeps you company. Stay with us.